Okay, so what happens is when you go to start it, you don't get a tachometer reading, or if you start driving it, you get no speedometer. Little backstory on this one, I got this back in, it's probably 2014. If it was around freezing or so, I would get these symptoms for the first minute or two, no tack and no speedometer while driving, then all of a sudden they'd both simultaneously return at the same time. Never got a check engine light, never had another issue whatsoever. And so, being in the electronics field that I'm in, I suspect bad capacitors. Let's see what's gonna happen. Oh, worked perfect. Worked absolutely perfectly. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and pull the ECM, PCM, whatever you wanna call it, out of this 99 Mountaineer and tear into it and see what it looks like. Okay, well I've got the computer out of the vehicle. And from what I can tell, the pins all look pretty good on it. Drain hole there at the bottom. It's got a Torx there and a Torx there. Another tag on the back of it, probably for warranty purposes somehow. If anybody knows what these numbers mean, please go ahead and chime right in. So let's go ahead and pop the top on this thing and see what it looks like inside. And I'm surprised. I only see two surface mount capacitors in here. That's it. I expected to see like 10 or 20 of them. Wow. Well, that makes life easy. Let's go ahead and zoom in on it, brighten it up so you can see what's going on in here. All right, well, starting from the back and moving forward. It's definitely got a good conformal coating on it, so moisture doesn't attack anything. I'm not seeing any kind of issues yet. Everything looks good. I wouldn't expect to see any burnt components or anything, just based on how everything works. Pretty doggone good, except when it's ice cold. There's the connectors up there. Let's go ahead and flip it over and look at the bottom of the board. And I do see a couple nice big, I believe they're probably copper heat sinks. They might be anodized to aluminum. I'm not gonna scrape them and find out, but they do have thermal pads in between them and the circuit board. A lot of surface mount components, but they all look like they're soldered extremely well. None of this cheap throwaway Chinese garbage soldering. Let's go ahead and zoom in on all the connectors. I think there's 104 pins on this thing. Well, from what I can see, everything looks excellent. Not seeing any problems with any of the pins. All the solder looks really good. Now this is looking straight down on it. Don't see any issues with any of the plate throughs. No pins they forgot to solder or missed at the factory. I'm sure these things are just wave soldered. Let me see if I can tip it up. It may or may not stay in focus. Nope, it's gonna go out. Let me uh, turn off manual focus real quick. All right, let's see if it'll focus on this when I pick it up. There you can certainly see how well each pin is actually soldered. I am seeing something on that one right there. I might want to re-solder that pin. Yeah, I think I'm going to re-solder that pin. I think I see a ring going around it there. And from the feel of the coating on this board, it's just silicone RTV. Like they just painted it with RTV. Let's get over to the other side. You can see a bridge of silicone between those pins. Don't think that's gonna hurt anything though. All right, all the pins with the exception of that one pin over here, actually two of them. Let me get a pointing apparatus. So that pin right there 
and this pin right there look like they've got rings around them. Although I fully expect this to be a double-sided board, so they should be soldered all the way through quite well. But I think I will touch those up just to be safe. And let's go ahead and uh, oh, there's another one. Second row down, second from the left. Might have a small ring around it right there. Well, let's go ahead and try to ESR those capacitors and see what they test like. Okay, so the first one's gonna be a 47 at 16. I'm gonna use that plate through right there. And I see 2.8 ohms, which isn't terribly bad. Now this one is a 47 at 50 volts. And I see 0.5 ohms on that one, which I'm perfectly happy with. I'm not really seeing issues with the two capacitors. Just for the heck of it, here's a tantalum capacitor. And it reads 0.22 ohms. Perfectly fine with that on a tantalum. Well, I think it's just going to have to go in. And maybe somebody can suggest something else. I don't know if this goes through the GEM, the generic electronic module, before it goes to the cluster. I did go ahead and replace, I think, three capacitors in the cluster when I changed all the lamps. I think they were 47s. I think I threw them away. And I think they were 47s at 16 also. And they were up in the five and six ohm range. I did go ahead and replace those. There was a single 4700 microfarad at I believe 35 volts in the cluster that I did not replace because it tested like 0 0.08 ohms or something like that. It tested perfectly fine. So I left that one alone. So if anybody has any ideas why the speedometer and the tachometer both simultaneously would come to life as it warms up, I would appreciate some input on that. Or if anyone's got a complete wiring diagram. I, I don't. I don't subscribe to like Mitchell or All Data or Intellifix, any of those. So if anybody's got any ideas, I would certainly love to hear you. All right, well, with the exception of soldering those pins and possibly replacing that 47 at 16, I think that's going to be it. Well, I'm going to try one more thing. I'm going to chill these capacitors and see how far they drift out of tolerance. We'll do the tantalum at the same time. So they have a nice layer of frost on them now. So they're down to a little below freezing. 23 ohms. And 2 ohms. And the tantalum is staying solid at 0.22 ohms. So for comparison purposes, let's go ahead and chill a couple of electrolytics and see what they test. So here's a couple of brand new electrolytics. This is a 47 at 16 volts. We verify lead integrity is zero. And it reads 0.51 ohms. And this is a 47 at 50 volts. Once again, lead integrity. Yeah, I see a zero in there. And it reads 0.12 ohms. Let's go ahead and chill them. And I'll try to read them while they're both cold. See if I can't blow them away. If I can do it without warming them up too much. It went up to 0.4 ohms. And then this one went up to 10 ohms. Well, it's better than what's in there now. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and replace them with leaded electrolytic capacitors. With the exception of that tantalum cap. Okay, so I've got the capacitors off the board. I did notice a 10 microfarad capacitor at 16 volts right there, and it does test about 0.44 ohms, hot or cold. I should say room temperature or cold. This other tantalum had no change room temperature or cold. But I do see the possibility of some leakage in this area, maybe. I see all these little blobs. You can see the outline of where the RTV was from the factory. 
I can move it. But is it possible that it was leaking onto this trace right here, maybe? Anyhow, let's go ahead and hit it with some acetone and see if it makes any kind of difference once I put it back together and try it. All right, that all looks pretty good. I'll go ahead and slam some new caps into it. We'll put it back together and see what happens. Okay, new caps are installed. Solder looks excellent. Went ahead and cleaned up the rosin from the solder. Let's go ahead and put it in manual focus and I'll tip this up. See if it'll focus on it. Everything looks great. I'm gonna go ahead and add some RTV like you've seen me do in the Miller and Kressel subwoofers just to make sure it's secured back to the board. And these are 105 degrees Celsius caps. So it'll pick that up on there somewhere. These are Worth Electronics, 105. And these, I think these are Kemet's, if I'm not mistaken. And it won't focus on it. Okay, RTV has been added. They both have an air gap underneath them. So yeah, I think we're done recapping the PCM or ECU, whatever you want to call it, from the 99 Mountaineer slash Ford Explorer. Next, we'll just have to throw it together and see what happens. Definitely better condition caps than the ones that came out. Hopefully it will resolve the problem, but if it doesn't, hopefully somebody knows a fix for this thing. Well, let's throw this together and see what happens. Okay, battery is reconnected. The engine computer is reinstalled and it's home. Let's go ahead and start it up and see what happens. So I do get the normal theft indicator blinking. I get normal lights. And I have my info display down here. Climate control does appear to work. Fan works. Tech started right up. No problems. Okay, stereo is going to beep now because I removed the battery. And it's a Sony. Sony's like to warn you. Okay, well, I think that's going to be it. Unless somebody has an idea what might be going on. If this does not fix it, I'm hoping it does. I'm not honestly that optimistic just based on the value of those capacitors. I really wanted to see one that was in the like 50 to 100 ohm range at room temperature. And that just didn't happen. Anyhow, like I said, if you got any ideas what might be going on. Is there like a gateway module that connects in between the cluster and the engine computer? I'm more than willing to pull this thing apart and check it. If you've got any ideas, let me know. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Okay, a little bonus material. Testing the capacitors out of circuit. I'm going to power this thing on. I'm going to short the leads together. Hit the zero button, so we have 0, 0.00. And first, the 47 at 16 volts. Hopefully it doesn't fly away. And I see 2.9 ohms, just a little high for my liking. And the 47 at 50. And I see one ohm on that one, 0. 0.9. Maybe I'm not on it all the way. Yeah, I'm seeing 0. 0.7 ohms on that one. Try to get a different position. Well, I think it's toast. I think that was it. Because of the twisting. Yeah, 0.87. I think it's damaged internally because of twisting it off the board. First one I've ever seen damaged internally. But still, 2.8, 2.9 on a 47 is a little excessive in my book at least. Plus, remember when we cooled this, it went way up into the teens and 20s of ohms. Incidentally, if you're looking at this, this is a Nichicon 105 degrees Celsius cap. 
47 at 50. N839 is the date code, probably 1998, 39th week, because it is a 1999 vehicle, 105 degrees Celsius. This one, let's take the bottom off of it. It just says W3P47 at 16. I don't know what the specs are on that capacitor at all. Incidentally, I did go ahead and resolder those pins that looked crack on the 104 pin connector. I don't believe they actually were cracked, but I did go ahead and resolder them nevertheless. Everyone, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye bye. Okay, well, let's see if it's going to do it. We'll start it up. Maybe I have the wrong keys.